You know, if you're not wearing your friends out with Facebook videos of your totally awesome aviation adventures, maybe it's because you don't have one of these, a point of view or action cam. Elsewhere on the channel, we did an overview of four of these products, and in this video, we're gonna dig down into the details of one particular camera. It's the new Verb Ultra 30 from Garmin. So let's get started. Let's start with a history lesson. Garmin got into the action cam market with the Verb models just three years ago. They were unique in that they had an unusual form factor and were waterproof without an external case right out of the box. They also had a rudimentary viewer. The Verbs produced excellent imagery and were easy to use. Garmin followed up with a more conventional looking action cam in the X and the XE. It's waterproof too, but no viewer. It has similar performance and menu structure. The new model is the Verb Ultra 30, and surprise, it follows the GoPro format of using a dedicated case for water protection, while GoPro, on the other hand, has done what Garmin originally did, made the camera itself waterproof. The Verb Ultra is smaller than the Verb XE and about the size of the GoPro Hero 4. Here's what they look like side by side. Kind of makes me wonder if this was more than just a coincidence. In addition to the waterproof case, the Verb Ultra has this skeleton type bracket with this snap-on lens protector. The skeleton case allows access to both the charging port and the HDMI jack. These are exposed so you don't have to mess with the door to get at them. Also, the Verb cameras use a GoPro style mount, so all of the GoPro aftermarket mounting accessories, and there are a lot of them, will work well with the Verb series. The USB port also serves as the external mic input, but to use that, you need this dedicated cable that has both mic input and audio input, or a smaller one like this that offers the mic input only. Connect either to the audio system and you can record intercom and radio chatter with good audio quality. Besides the smaller size, what's really new about the Garmin Ultra 30 is that it has a touchscreen for both viewing and menu control, and Garmin has completely revised the menu structure, which I'll get to in a moment. Garmin has also added some shooting resolution and frame rate options. Here's the full list, and it's considerable. Note that in addition to 4K, the Verb also has 2.7K and quite a bit of frame rate flexibility in shooting various resolutions. You might not necessarily use all of those, but they're nice to have if you want higher frame rates for action shots. In setting up the camera, the app is the best way to go. Yeah, the touchscreens work okay, but the app gives you better control. The app also has a real-time streamer so you can see what the camera is recording without much latency. There's also a dedicated remote control if you prefer that option. I'm running the app here on an iPad so you can see the menu choices more clearly. As far as operability goes, the Verb Ultra is about the simplest action cam I've seen. From the home menu on the camera, you can set video resolutions and frame rates field of view and things like time lapse and slow motion. I found that doing this in the airplane with the app was easy. You just have to be careful not to drop the iPhone out the open door. While these cameras lack zoom capability, the Verb Ultra has two settings for tighter shots, a zoom and an ultra zoom. Here's what those look like. It also has an expansive wide view, which is useful for in-cockpit shots. One powerful addition to the Ultra is what Garmin calls Pro Settings. This is Garmin's version of ProTune, which GoPro has offered for several years. You can adjust the color curve, set the ISO, or use exposure bias. This level of control is good to have when the lighting isn't perfect, which it often isn't. For example, in backlit situations, say inside a cockpit shooting with a bright background, being able to adjust exposure compensation is a real plus. Also new to the Verb Ultra is voice control. Now the GoPro Hero 5 has this too. On the Garmin, the mic is located right here on the front of the camera, and yes, it works through the waterproof case. Sorry, I couldn't resist seeing if the voice control works underwater. It doesn't, but it does work pretty well on dry land, so if you say, okay, Garmin, the camera goes into command mode and you can tell it to start recording, stop recording, take a picture, and so forth. Impressive, I guess, but I'd be a lot more impressed if it works that well in the cockpit. Well, it does work in the airplane. Call me impressed. 
I'm feeding audio into the camera through the external microphone jack and a, and a microphone in my ear cup with side tone generated by the intercom. Now in the air where it's a little bit noisier, it doesn't always pick up the command, but it seems to work pretty well. On a quiet airplane, it should be pretty reliable. Another feature Garmin has added is image stabilization. And depending on where you mount the camera, you're going to get both mechanical vibration and probably a little aerodynamic buzzing. The stabilization helps with that, but only to a degree. Here's a shot with the camera windshield mounted with the stabilization off. And here's what it looks like with the stabilization on. But it can't work miracles. Here's a shot from my tail mount. You might not know it, but the vertical fin on any airplane flexes quite a lot from the prop slipstream, and the camera just can't damp that out. Now on to 4K. Do you really want it or need it? Got a 4K television? How about a 4K monitor? If you do, the footage from these cameras is going to look terrific. Otherwise, maybe not so much. On the other hand, images shot in 4K and rendered in 1080p will look a lot sharper than they do if shot natively in 1080p, so that's something to consider. Measure that against the need to have a more powerful video editor and computer to handle these files. So taking a look at the various frame rates and resolutions available on the Verb Ultra, let's start with 1080p. This is being shot at 1080p 60 frames per second, which is a good general setting for most shooting. And you can see it produces a pretty nice image. And we're pretty much in uh, perfect lighting for any of the cameras today. The sun is low on the horizon, and it's not too harsh. So now let's take a look at 4K. Now I switch the camera over to full 4K. This is 4K at 30 frames per second. I doubt if you'll see too much difference between this and uh, 1080p. However, if you want to crop out, uh, let's take a look at what this same shot looks at, looks like cropped out to 125%. So here it is cropped out to 125%, 4K at 30 frames uh, per second. If you want to compare that to the same shot in 1080p, here it is in 1080p cropped out to 125%. Uh, you might be able to see a little bit, bit of a difference, and, and that may be why 4K may be worth having at times. For post-production handling of files, the Verb Ultra acts as a mass storage device, meaning that if you plug it into a USB port, it appears as just another drive with the video files in a directory. Personally, I prefer this over the GoPro's proprietary utility to offload and process the files or its new cloud transfer. It's just easier and offers more flexibility and control. For video editing, Garmin offers the free Verb Edit program. It's a minimal video editor, but it does allow you to pretty easily overlay GPS-derived data on your video and these can include all kinds of aviation values, such as vertical speed, altitude, and bank angle. I think that's useful for training flights. And while GoPro's new Hero 5 has an onboard GPS, it can't do this yet. Considering the image quality, the ease of use, and the shooting flexibility, the Verb Ultra is definitely a good choice for an aviation action cam. And if you do other sports like skiing or snowboarding or cycling or whatever, it is every bit the equivalent of the GoPro Hero 5. Now you can find a full report on these cameras in the November 2016 issue of Aviation Consumer. And elsewhere on the AvWeb channel, you can find a general overview of all of these cameras. For AvWeb, I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting. Thanks for watching.